Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about familial hypercholesterolemia or FH. So what is familial hypercholesterolemia? Well, it is a monogenic and autosomal dominant disorder resulting in high levels of blood LDL cholesterol levels with normal triglyceride levels. And individuals can be either heterozygous or homozygous for this condition. Homozygous individuals are uh, have a worse outcome or worse uh, severity of the condition and they present earlier in age and we'll talk about a little bit more in detail between the differences between heterozygous and homozygous individuals. So if we look at a pedigree here, if we have two heterozygous parents, there is a 25% chance that a child will be homozygous. So and again this uh, is something we call gene dosing. So if you have one one of the alleles, you have a certain severity. If you have two alleles, it increases the severity of the condition. Now, familial hypercholesterolemia is the most common autosomal dominant disorder. And it is extremely important because it increases the risk of early onset atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Now, homozygous individuals are very rare. There are usually one in 300,000 to 400,000, but heterozygous individuals are more uh, common. And uh, in parts of South Africa, individuals uh, have a one in 70 chance of being heterozygous. And in parts of Europe, uh, individuals have a one in 300 chance of being heterozygous with uh, numbers in the U.S. about uh, in, in the middle of this, about 1 in 200 to 1 in 250. So what is the pathophysiology of familial hypercholesterolemia? Well, it's all about mutations. As we mentioned before, it's an autosomal dominant condition. So there are several mutations that can lead to this condition. One is a mutation defect in the ApoB slash E or LDL receptor gene. And it leads to an impaired LDL particle clearance and leads to an overall increase in LDL cholesterol levels. So if an individual is in, uh, unable to or has an impaired clearance of LDL, their LDL levels will increase. Now there are four different types of mutation in this LDL receptor gene. One is a mutation in the synthesis of the receptor. Uh, this is known as class one. So this simply means that there are just less receptors being made. So there are less receptors to take up LDL. A second mutation is a transportation ability mutation. That's class two. And that just means that there are receptors there, but the receptors are unable to transport the LDL cargo with, into the cell. Class three um, is a binding mutation and that just means that the LDL um, is unable to bind the to the receptor. The receptor is there but there's an issue with binding of LDL to the receptor. And the last mutation is internalization. This is class 4 and this again is the receptor, LDL receptor is there. The receptor can bind to LDL, it can transport, but it, it's not able to completely internalize the cargo into the cell. So these are the four different types of mutations of the LDL receptor gene that can lead to familial hypercholesterolemia. Now the mutation in the LDL receptor gene is the most common cause of familial hypercholesterolemia, but there are other genes that can be affected as well that can lead to this condition. So another mutation that can lead to familial hypercholesterolemia is a mutation in proprotein convertase subtilisin kexin 9 or PCSK9. And this mutation is a gain of function mutation. And what PCSK9 actually does is it actually forms a complex with LDL receptor. So what it actually does is PCSK9 binds to LDL receptor and actually downregulates the LDL receptor. It'll actually negatively regulate the LDL receptor. So a mutation in PCSK9, a gain of function mutation in PCSK9 can increase the activity of PCSK9 and lead to increased uh, binding to LDL receptor 
and further downregulation of the LDL receptor, leading to increased levels of LDL. And another mutation that can lead to familial hypercholesterolemia is a mutation in ApoB100. Now, ApoB100 is a ligand for the LDL receptor, so it is located on LDL, and it is actually the ligand that binds to the LDL receptor. Now, a mutation in ApoB100 is an autosomal dominant mutation, and it leads to impaired binding of ApoB100 to the LDL receptor, so that the impaired binding of ApoB100 to the LDL receptor would uh, prohibit or impair or uh, decrease the binding and clearance of the LDL through the LDL receptor. So all of this again would lead to increased levels of LDL cholesterol. So I always like to show this image. LDL brings cholesterol to the tissues. HDL takes cholesterol away from the tissues. So uh, a way to remember this is that LDL is, is bad. L for lethal. Uh, HDL, you can remember, uh, is good. It's uh, H stands for healthy. So um, I'll also do an, a lesson on um, on cholesterol transport and other lipid metabolism pathways as well in another lesson. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of FH? Well, one of the signs of FH is a tendon xanthoma. So what is a tendon xanthoma? Well, it is actually a collection of fatty tissue that lines um, certain tendons. One of those tendons in particular is the Achilles tendon. So you can see here in this individual, these, there's a little bulge of, of um, accumulation of lipids here. Now, xanthelasma is also another sign of FH. Xanthelasma is a collection of, uh, is really a collection of cholesterol around the eyelids of a patient. So you see these, this yellow, yellowing uh, or yellowish buildup around the patient's eyes. Another sign is corneal arcus. Corneal arcus is this ring around the iris of the eye, so you can see this whitening around the outer edges of the iris. And one of the major uh, complications uh, with familial hypercholesterolemia is again premature atherosclerosis. This is why this condition is uh, so important to recognize, so important to uh, to treat because of the increased risk of premature atherosclerosis. And really, like I showed before, if there's high levels of cholesterol being delivered to tissues, this cholesterol can build up along the wall of arteries and other um, other parts of the cardiovascular system and can really lead to a, a, a narrowing of, an, of, a, of the lumen of, uh, the, of an artery and can really lead to um, ischemia of different tissues. And premature atherosclerosis is in particular more um, important and worse in homozygous individuals. And many individuals with homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia actually die before age of 20 simply because of an advanced atherosclerosis. Other symptoms include angina, so chest pain, because uh, coronary arteries are being blocked. They're, they're undergoing atherosclerotic uh, buildup. And aortic stenosis can also occur. There's an increased risk of aortic stenosis with familial hypercholesterolemia as well. How do we diagnose FH? Well, with homozygous individuals, there's a few different things we need to um, have in order to uh, diagnose an individual or diagnose a homozygous individual. One is that they should have an increased total and LDL cholesterol um, levels. If they're untreated, they should have levels greater than 500 milligrams per deciliter. And if they're treated, they should have... Um, LDL cholesterol levels higher than 300 milligrams per deciliter. And on top of that, they should have a cutaneous or tendon xanthoma before the age of 10, so quite young, or they should have total and um, LDL cholesterol levels high 
in both parents, suggestive of heterozygous parents. So if there's evidence that their parents are heterozygous for familial hypercholesterolemia and they have very high levels of home, um, have very high levels of total and LDL cholesterol, then this would preclude a diagnosis of uh, homozygous FH. Or if they have high, very high levels of total and LDL cholesterol with uh, cutaneous or tendon xanthoma before the age of 10, that would also indicate a diagnosis of homozygous FH. Now with heterozygous individuals, it's a little, uh, little different. Um, uh, one very uh, specific way of diagnosing either of these conditions is through genetic testing. Um, so if there's a mutation found in LDL receptor ApoB or PCSK9, this can indicate a, a diagnosis of familial hypercholesterolemia. Also the clinical presentation, we've mentioned all the signs and symptoms of FH. If the levels of total and LDL cholesterol are not as high as they would be in a homozygous individual, but you're still seeing higher than normal levels, and you're also seeing the clinical presentation, this could indicate a diagnosis of heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. And the definition of FH um, by the American Medical Association is that it is LDL cholesterol greater than 190 milligrams per deciliter and either one, uh, either first degree relative with greater than 190 milligrams per liter or uh, first degree relative with a known history of coronary artery disease. So levels are at least 190 milligrams per deciliter, but not it would not approach as high as some of these levels in a homozygous individual. So this is uh, this diagnosis of a heterozygous individual is a, is a bit more uh, tricky. But if you're seeing that there's very high hot levels of LDL cholesterol, and you're seeing also with the clinical presentation, this can suggest a diagnosis of heterozygous FH. But again, genetic testing is the best way to uh, best way to diagnose individuals with FH. So how do we treat FH? Well, treatment involves um, a primary goal of lowering LDL levels. Again, because LDL levels correlate with increased risk of atherosclerosis, increased risk of coronary artery disease. We want to lower the LDL levels. And you want to start treatment as young as possible. Many of these individuals have high LDL levels um, for all of their lives, even um, when they're young, especially homozygous individuals. One treatment is using a statin. Statins are HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. And th this is typically used for heterozygotes. Um, usually high dose uh, statins are used. Uh, an example of a statin would be a atorvastatin. So here's the chemical makeup of atorvastatin. Another type of uh, medication would be a PCSK9 inhibitor. PCSK9 inhibitors are really cholesterol absorption inhibitors. Um, an example of a PCSK9 inhibitor is azitamibe. So here is azitamibe. And we typically use PCSK9 inhibitors if an individual was not getting enough um, effect from the statins. And usually, uh, even with high dose statins, it usually only um, has a 50% um, reduction in cholesterol. So we may need a little extra, even in heterozygotes. So a PCSK9 inhibitor could be an add-on to a statin therapy. And another class of medications uh, that we can use to treat FH is MTP inhibitors. And this is typically used in homozygotes. And what would they would do in a homozygous individual is that they would use a statin plus an MTP inhibitor. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a lesson on uh, familial hypercholesterolemia. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.